Good morning, folks. This is ionized iron in the ultraviolet light given off in 171 angstroms. Today we've got earthquakes, news articles, weather, and more, but we're starting off as always over at spaceweathernews.com and finding a mostly calm last 24 hours on our star. Some of the plasma filaments are writhing around, but none is ejected to produce significant CMEs. The bright areas remain silent as two sunspot groups can't bring the solar flare X-rays up off the ground. In 304 angstroms of ionized helium, you can see the 3D structure of the filaments above and separate from the solar surface, one of the reasons they eject so easily. Solar wind continued to calm all day, and we are in total geomagnetic quiet conditions until the stream from this southern coronal hole arrives in about two days from now. Until then, it's all about the lithosphere, and the uptick began with a very odd seismic swarm at the North Pole, which got stronger as the day went on before stopping just mid-afternoon. This one hit above the 86th latitude. We're at NASA video here looking back at 15 years of the GRACE mission meant to study hydrology and gravity on Earth and subtle changes in the gravity due to the hydrology. Article and video are linked for you below. Apparently the mission is deemed so vital that the replacement plans are already in place for the satellites which are about to run out of fuel. Scientists are taking a look at the megaplanet Kepler-13ab. So big it got two letters, I suppose. Most interestingly, it apparently snows titanium oxide on the night side of the planet. The irony is that's basically sunscreen, and it only happens on the dark side, away from the local starlight. Folks, many of you asked about this asteroid that swung through the system last month. I didn't think much of it at first, since by discovery it had already missed Earth and everything else and was on its way out. But, one of you pointed out that its perihelion period was during the solar flares of September, and we see that behavior with comets sometimes. And since this one is said to be an interstellar asteroid, that means we've got abnormal system chemistry and a charge-discharge potential higher than just about any comet that ever comes by the sun. Brilliant observing, those of you whose brain went there. Thank you all for your pre-orders of our kids' first book, Ages 2 and Up. They have arrived, and we will begin sending those out later this week. Yesterday's podcast was a ton of fun. Website members, this is one you need to go check out. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.